few things in the life of Leonardo da Vinci were straightforward, and that is what made him into one of the, if not the, most intriguing artists in history. His Mona Lisa is the most famous painting in the world, and his Salvador Mundi is the most expensive one ever sold, if it is even by him. And also, his paintings of the Virgin of the Rocks have their special history. Let's start with the basics. There are two versions of this oil painting, one in the Louvre and one in the National Gallery in London. They show the Virgin Mary with baby Jesus, Saint John the Baptist and an angel inside of a kind of open air cave. Here you can see them next to each other, both measuring over 6 feet almost 2 meters high. The version in the Louvre on the left was the first to be completed and is much less conventional. For example, the version in the National Gallery on the right contains halos on top of the heads of John the Baptist, Jesus and Mary. And John the Baptist is carrying a cross with him. But these traditional elements are not present in the version in the Louvre. You can also see a clear difference in the face of Jesus. Also, in the National Gallery version of the painting, the angel is not pointing at John the Baptist and seems to gaze into the distance, as if the angel is dreaming or imagining the scene instead of participating in it. To understand why there is one traditional and one non-traditional version of this painting, we need to go back to the early 1480s when Da Vinci received a commission from Prior Bartolomeo Scorleone and the Chapel of the Confraternity of the Immaculate Conception in the Church of San Francesco Maggiore in Milan. They wanted this up-and-coming artist to paint the theme of the Immaculate Conception, a Catholic dogma that Mary was born without sin, to serve as the center of an altarpiece for the Chapel of the Immaculate Conception. Da Vinci received the commission because he was a brilliant student from the studio of Andrea del Verrocchio. But the confraternity had no idea yet that Da Vinci was strong-willed, interested in all sorts of innovations and hard to control. It took Da Vinci about three years to complete his version of the Immaculate Conception, which is the version now in the Louvre. The theme of the Immaculate Conception was pretty new at the time of the commission, as only six years before the Pope had officially approved this dogma in Europe. So Da Vinci did not really have other artworks on the same theme to draw inspiration from. When he presented his finished altar painting, the confraternity was shocked by the lack of symbolism and the absence of any halos. The confraternity was dedicated to the dogma of the Immaculate Conception and this did not fit at all with their ideas. Nowadays, we may consider it an innovative and gorgeous painting, but back in the day they could not appreciate it at all. So they rejected the painting and wanted Leonardo to make a new version that was in line with their more traditional ideas. In contrast, Leonardo da Vinci considered the Louvre version of the painting a real masterpiece in which he could perfectly express his artistic ideas. But after the version was rejected, Leonardo reluctantly created another version of this painting which included all the elements that the confraternity asked for. And that version is in the National Gallery in London today. But it was not that Leonardo immediately started to work on that new version. It took him almost a decade to start working on that new version, and another decade to complete it. So some 20 years after his first version was rejected, Da Vinci finally completed the commission to the confraternity's satisfaction. So let's show the complete picture first. The painting by Da Vinci would become the center of a larger altarpiece with a triptych at the center. Da Vinci's painting would be in the middle of these two paintings. On the left is an angel in green with a veil, painted by an associate of Leonardo, perhaps by Francesco Napolitano. 
and on the right is an angel in red with a lute by Giovanni Ambrosio de Predis. So let's look in some more detail at the main scene. The Virgin Mary, the children Jesus and John the Baptist and an angel are pictured in a triangular composition in a rocky environment. The Virgin Mary is sitting on the ground, which is referred to as Madonna of Humility. She is the center of attention in this painting. The right hand of Mary is on the shoulder of John the Baptist and her left hand is above the head of Jesus. A protective gesture. John the Baptist is folding his hands and is praying towards Jesus. At the same time, Jesus raises his right hand to bless John the Baptist. And behind Jesus is an archangel seated, possibly Gabriel or Uriel. Notice that she looks quite feminine though, but from the other works of Da Vinci we know that he preferred to paint his angels as androgynous figures. In the background you can see the rocky grotto and a river, most likely inspired by the Dolomite mountains, which are to the northeast of Milan. In the foreground of the grotto, various flowers and plants are depicted, some of which are hybrids of different plants and flowers, others are more easily recognizable, like the irises, lilies and ivy. Despite the critique of the confraternity that the first work by Leonardo did not contain enough symbolism, there is still plenty to be found. First of all, the rocks and caves represent a sanctuary, a safe place. And the rocks also refer to Jesus, who is often called the rock of the Christian religion. And the flowers and plants are carefully chosen. For example the palm leaves, which can be seen behind the head of John the Baptist, are a symbol of Mary and a symbol of the victory of Jesus over earthly temptations. But, as mentioned before, this painting is also one of the first ones in which the halos for the holy or sacred people are left out. While this was mostly unheard of in medieval or early renaissance paintings, it did fit with the more realistic painting style of the high renaissance. So, in the second and more conventional versions, the halos have returned. Not in the shape of large golden halos of medieval times, but as more subtle, artistic, thin golden circles above their heads. And this time, John the Baptist can easily be identified by his cross of martyrdom. The figures in Leonardo's painting seem to softly emerge from the darkness of the cave. This is the result of the sfumato technique Da Vinci introduced here. Sfumato comes from the Italian sfumare, which means to evaporate like smoke. And Leonardo da Vinci famously used the sfumato technique to create a special atmosphere in his paintings. He created the sfumato technique by using soft transitions between light and dark areas, as opposed to stark contrasts. And finally, when the painting was almost finished, he applied a coat of mix or varnish and black pigment to create a hazy or smoky effect. Well, I hope you enjoyed this discussion of Da Vinci's versions of the Virgin of the Rocks. If you enjoyed it, please hit the thumbs up button, subscribe and hit the notification bell to be alerted when new videos are released on this channel. Thanks for watching.